Met Gala, the place where all the eat people and A-list celebrities come together to enjoy an evening and pose for the cameras in their most lavish, extravagant, stunning or horrible interpretations of a proposed dress code by the Costume Institute. Guests are expected to follow a theme most times in relation to the annual exhibit and generally in hot couture. Each year we see truly amazing art pieces being modeled by our idols, stunning top models and other ultra famous people. And as always, we come across some internet drama about who didn't follow the guidelines, who was rude, who was disrespectful, etc. The Met is for me a really cool expression of the designer's creativity and talent. I love watching all the looks, reading about the theme, about the inspiration, and interpreting people's outfits. And there's always so much to unpack. And for me, it's always very interesting and very inspiring, as you can see from my face. So in this video, I'm going to summarize and explain the theme. We're going to critique, um, interpret some of the most and less talked about outfits and talk about a bit of drama too. So stay here with me as we unpack the whole thing. So by the way, hi, my name is Marina Blau. In case you didn't know already, welcome to my channel. I hope you like this video and I hope you stay. This makeup is inspired by the Met Gala, I will post a tutorial, so stay tuned for that if you are interested. First of all, disclaimer, please don't come at me if you have different opinions. Obviously, my likes, my dislikes, my opinions, my interpretations and everything is very subjective. We're talking about art, we're talking about fashion, it's my taste. Please, please don't hate me. I encourage you to Put your opinions, your own thoughts on the comments. I would love to read them, even if you disagree. And also, I am not commenting on the people. I am commenting on the dresses. Let's get into it. The exposition theme is the first thing that we need to unpack. And this year was Sleeping Beauty's Reawakening Fashion. The exhibit is of the Costume Institute and it was described by Max Holin which is the CEO us. This innovative collection will expand the limits of our imagination and will invite us to experiment lots of different facets of the same piece, to learn more about its history and conclusion, to appreciate its beauty in depth. Sorry for my accent. So the exposition will highlight 50 unique pieces that are nowadays too fragile to wear. They are what gives the title of Sleeping Beauties. And they will also try to revive the pieces using like illusionism and technology with AI, video, animation, projections, you know. The idea is to stimulate a sensorial experience for people to be able to leave the pieces again. And that's what gives the exposition the reawakened part. Okay, and all this takes us to the dress code. It is called, for this year, the Garden of Time. Hence, the makeup. This theme is based also on a novel with the same name, The Garden of Time, from J.G. Ballard. It is an utopic story about two arrows that live in a beautiful villa. They have a terrace looking towards their beautiful garden, which is made out of colorful crystalline flowers, but truly really a dystopic representation of artificial paradises and the psychological effects of the fast pace of technology, of our society. So Lear wants to protect the villa from a horrible, chaotic mob which is attacking and invading the whole world. And to preserve the villa, he needs to tear each day one crystal from the flowers because they turn back time. He just wants to keep the peace, the beauty and the calmness and protect it from the fast-paced approaching invasive chaos. <sighs> that was a lot. Anyways, the story ends with the mob, which you can guess it represents every ale of society like consumerism, technology that controls us, the war, the climate problems that are going to destroy our planet. This mob finally invades a uh, now abandoned and decaying shell of the villa with the garden completely dead and overgrown. Okay, cool. So now how do we translate all this into dressing up for a gala. Well, that's the designer's job. That's the fun part. It's so cool. And that's what we're gonna look into. So a really easy interpretation of the dress code is the garden part. It's called the garden of time. So garden is in it. And there's a piece of the Sleeping Beauty's collection from the exhibit, which is this night coat from Charles Frederick Ward from 8089. And I feel like this print specifically matches so good with the theme. Dainty embroidered fabric and also like the melancholic vibes of the colors. And actually, I am fairly sure that Anne Winter's look for the Met was inspired by it. 
And I mean, flowers in spring, big whoop, right? It's not the most unique, original, and avant-garde thing ever, but it is the theme of this year, in part. So I won't say that the florals, the dresses with flowers all over them and stuff like that, it's a too boring or lazy interpretation. If the designs are like well done and have other connotations or a deep meaningful concept. For example, I'm in the gray for this terrarium dread. Terrarium, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce several R's together. As in Spanish, it will be terrario. Terrarium. <laughs> this dress from Yun Takahashi's 2024 collection. I do think it matches the concept so well because, yeah, it includes the flowers, though. But I really like the idea of the encapsulated, protected garden. It feels like it is a reference to the protection of the beauty and its fragility. I don't love the dress per se, um, it's not my jam, but I think it is really accurate. Especially if you take into account that the Met is surrounded, like the people are gonna be surrounded by paparazzi and cameras and bots and like things moving around them, technology. And this dress encapsulates the nature inside and protects it chef kiss. On the other hand, I feel like Doja Cat's designer made a very obvious and lazy interpretation of the concept. She's dressed like a Roman statue. And I mean, she looks gorgeous. I do love the silhouette and the draping. I'm a huge fan of the makeup, but I don't see the fragility and the fleeting beauty on this look. I actually kind of see the opposite. Like, a statue is long-lasting, it's strong, it's inorganic, it's static. I feel like they just went for the aesthetic and like they thought, well, it's a garden statue, so it's good enough. Okay, usually people hate a lot on the Kardashians, so I'm curious of what you think. But in this case, I do like Kim's look because I really feel like it matches the theme perfectly. Like she tends to go a little bit for free, but this time I feel like it goes well. It matches. The flowers of the garden of Ballard's novel are made of glass. And the garden is super crystalline and shiny. So this dress is perfect for that. Like, so dainty, so elegant, so fragile. I don't get the cardigan though. I don't know why she's wearing that. I guess it's cold. Mostly same with Janelle Moan's one. Moan's, sorry. In this Vera Wang dress. In the sense of... I get the crystalline dainty pieces and I love them, but I actually think I do like Kim Kardashian's dress more. I think this is like too festive, too positive. Yeah, the giant flower is throwing me off a little bit and also the cutouts on the sides are just like too modern, like too trendy for the theme, I don't know. Okay, Lana Del Rey, always laying, she eats every time, okay? I love the grungy, decaying vibes. I'm looking there because I have the, like the pictures, okay? So I think she went more for the dystopic part, like simulating the overgrown dead garden of the novel. I love the nude color, like the tool surrounding her, because it reminds me of the antiques of the Sleeping Beauties collection. Like actually the nightgowns, the lingerie, the Victorian era. And I don't know, the placement of the tool around her just makes it look really fragile, which I love like you wouldn't touch her in case everything fell down you know okay i do not get this at all i am sorry like Jaden smith seems to be wearing like a trip new york city style wraith long skirt i don't see how it matches the fragile organic floral vibe of the dress code at all and then the jacket is also like too strong with the contrast lines and super oversized fit yeah it's giving like cool streetwear urban fashion guy i mean it has like the flowers there but it, it seems like they just threw them there and said okay good enough and then willow's outfit is super minimalistic for the met which i don't hate instantly but i mean how is this much in the dress code no it's just giving like office like formal boring event on the other hand this is for example a quite minimal look for the Met. Tyler's wearing here a super flattering sand dress, but the shape is just really simple. It just has like a beautiful train, but not too exaggerated. But, but, I think it really matches the dress code. She's the sand of the literal hourglass that she's 
wearing as a clutch, which is basically the only accessory. And it clearly represents the ephemeral, how time passes. I mean, time is in the title as well, so. Plus, the part of Ballard's novel, where they have to like tear the crystal flowers to turn back time. It's just so good. I love the concept. And also, apparently the fabric has tiny crystals like embedded into it that gives it a very special sparkle, I guess in person. I'm actually gonna comment these two together because I think the concept is really similar. Levi's suit is Loewe, which I think goes super on brand with Loewe. And I do like the fading of the flowers into the black. I feel like for the myth, he could have added some more into the concept not just like flowers because it's a garden duh. but it's cool it's cool anyway it's definitely good enough for a man now Ayo Edeveris is her name her dress follows the same flower fading into solid color concept but honestly I would have done it in black too because black represents like the death of the garden the dystopic component you know the darkness of the world representing the mob while at least for me white is more positive but anyway i do love the dress i love the texture and i do understand the concept so cool um okay wisdom k ate and served i really love to see the men dressing up too instead of just like wearing a freaking black suit and add like a little tiny accessory <clears throat> adrian brody so yeah, I love the silhouette. I think it's very suggestive of the Sleeping Beauty's antique pieces. I love the hat. I don't love the singular giant rose. Yeah, I think I'd like it more if it had like several dead roses and smaller ones. But it's fine overall because the burnt tail, I love that so much. Like it's obviously my favorite part. I love it. Because I think it does represent so good the chaos and the decay and you know the bad ending of the novel okay. kiki palmer also did a statuesque theme like doja cat and again i don't love that concept but at least in this case she reflected the decay a little bit with the unraveling of the seams you know it's like a statue that is disintegrating however I don't know, I think it would be even better if they had made it more, like, dirty. Like, adding some dead branches, like Lana's dress. Or, I don't know, like, representing the rust or the mold of abandoned statues. I just see it too positive and too sparkly, but not in the crystal flowers way, more in, like, a party New Year's Eve <laughs> kind of way. This one on elf banning is so cool. It's absolutely ethereal. Like look at that i appreciate that it represents the crystalline garden fantasy it's so dainty you would almost be afraid to touch her the glass details oh my god apparently they added four layers of resin to the bustier part to make it like a glass effect that it's called trump louis i don't know how to pronounce that trump louis and that creates like the illusion of the fabric being lifted by the glass birds. It's just so freaking cool. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. In a just aesthetic point of view, I don't like this dress. <laughs> this is Demi Moore, by the way. I can see the floral theme, obviously. Although I do not understand those arrows there. The shape reminds me of the Queen of Hearts of Alice in Wonderland. I don't see it very aligned with the theme they used vintage wallpaper to make this and apparently the embroidery is in silk and it took over 11,000 hours to create but yeah the upcycling of the wallpaper takes us back to the reawakening fashion part of the exhibit so that's really cool but i still don't think the vibe matches really with the dress code jessica Biel looks stunning love the dress love the silhouette love the colors think it represents the flowers in bloom it's beautiful um i would love to wear it myself to be honest but as for the concept i do think that it's a bit lazy like too obvious this concept has so many layers i feel like it's a really good concept and the garden part this is a part of the title and it is a part of the story but it's not the whole thing and i feel like so many people just did that part they read garden of time and they 
stand. Okay, let's do florals. And so much more filling and things behind it. The time component, the decay, the dystopic part, the artificial paradise concept, chaos of the world versus the beauty of our little oasis, like comfort zones, the crystal plants, the fleeting beauty. I don't know. It just feels like center centering your whole concept around just flowers on the that flowers are beautiful um it's too easy just wanted like to show an example of a dress that i really really like but i don't like the concept and that's why i love sundaya's look i also love her a little bit too much okay she's kind of my crush but but I'm talking about the dresses, not the person. So starting with the colors, I love the black and blue choice. I think it's very unique in this matte, especially it's not a common nature color. So I think that's why people didn't, like the designers they didn't go for blue. And they went more for like pinks, reds, greens, obviously. Also the satin, like slightly shining fabric. I think it matches really good the grunge dark makeup definitely adds up to the whole concept i love it and then there's so many details that make it cooler i tried to not listen to anything but i saw someone commenting on this look and he said like mm, i'm a bit disappointed i think she could do more and i'm like but you're not looking at the details first glance you just see like a blue beautiful dress but the grape and olives embellishments that could perfectly represent the Eden Gardens. I feel like it's on purpose. Eden is a paradise in Christianity. Eden Gardens are like beautiful blossoming gardens. They are represented in the like in the Sixteen Chapel and that sort of Italian Renaissance paintings. And the shape of the dress reminds me also of a Roman statue. Okay, in the novel there's mention of a statue at the end of a statue of the two earls that is uh, decaying in the garden. So that's why people are doing statues. So the shape reminds me of a Roman statue, but I think the dark green and the blue and also the choice of fabric make it look way more fragile and decayed than the other statues looks that we've commented. And then the headpiece with the black feather it reminds me of the phoenix, which is a literal symbol for reawakening, which is the name of the exhibit. And also the fishnet veil, like representing the morning, you know, death and something that has gone with time. It's just so good. Maybe I'm reading too much into it and like, maybe the veil is just there and I'm reading <laughs> and I am just saying that it represents morning, but I don't care. I love it. I don't care. I love, I love it. it. Okay, I also love Ahbad Abdi's look so much. The structure that she's wearing over the dress reminds me of like a sewing mannequin or a teared up structure of the Victorian dresses. Like the thing they used to put under them to make them look so puffy. Which is very in line with the exhibit theme. Sleeping Beauty's Reawakening. I also love the headpiece with the glass floral motif. Love the earrings and of course like the whole dress it's beautiful. It looks like it's sequins but especially the lower part has like a spidery hanging fabric that is also shining. I love it. I love it. Okay now the drama because as always there has been some internet drama about the gala there always is i'm here to talk about fashion i don't even know the majority of the celebrities um that i've talked about honestly so i'm not gonna comment on like celebrity drama let's watch this short because it kind of summarized what people have been saying about the 2024 Met Gala. The Met Gala 2024 was a mess. First of all, no one showed up on theme, including the Kardashians and many famous singers and actors, even though it was super easy to follow this year. Not to mention people wanted to keep their outfits so low-key that they were being escorted out of their hotels in body bags, but honestly, it's not that deep. In fact, Doja Cat showed up in a towel, but everyone found it super disrespectful because it looks like she didn't even try. And Kim Kardashian's dress was so tight that she could could barely walk and it looked like she was having trouble breathing. Cardi B spent the entire time charging her phone on the red carpet. Meanwhile, people were comparing Lana Del Rey's outfit to the Gargoyle King from Riverdale. Everyone was saying that Lizzo looked like a giant meatball. Not to mention the line to get into the actual event is super long and everyone is pushing each other around trying to get in. And despite the list of attendees being released, many celebrities didn't show up last minute, including people like Selena Gomez, Taylor Swift, Jenna Ortega, Billie Eilish, and the Biebers. Okay, um, giant meatball 
apart because I am not gonna comment on that. I don't know why this guy says that no one was on theme and everyone in the comments is like agreeing apparently. I'm baffled uh, by like all these influencers saying this thing every year. Like every year people say no one was on theme. Um, I think you're not reading into it. <laughs> There's always people that it's not gonna be super on theme. There's always gonna be men in black <laughs> suits and women like in blazers and little black dresses but there are a lot of people that are following the theme and are doing impressive things another way like she was very on theme and you just compare her to a riverdale whatever like what the fuck bro do you want people to be on theme or do you just want to like talk shit i feel like a lot of people do this on every met gala like they say no one tried hard enough and then the people that are doing the thing they just insult them but also i found out the same video from the same guy for 2023 it's the same video like watch it with me the Met Gala 2023 was a mess. First off, no one showed up on theme, including the Kardashians and many famous singers and actors. People wanted to keep their outfits so low-key that they were being escorted out of their hotels in body bags. Not to mention someone showed up in a cat suit and there was cockroaches everywhere. I just hate this. It's like so rage baiting. Like it's generating drama when there's no drama. His caption for both the 2024 video and the 2023 video is the same and it is Met Gala 2020X was a mess and a, you know, the school emoji. It's just ridiculous. I don't know why, why he does that. He also has like more videos critiquing the outfits, but he's not critiquing the outfits. He's critiquing the people um, and their appearance. <laughs> I feel like he's read the theme. I just hate these kinds of videos. I've seen a lot. Um, I'm showing you these ones because it's the same fucking video. Like he's saying the same about the Kardashians that were not Kim, and they literally are at least Kim. And the body bag thing—it's not from 2024. So if you are interested in the Met Gala, actually, um, don't watch these things. Um, watch people actually interested in fashion. I am actually interested in fashion. I tried to show that, and uh, there's a lot of experts and educated people that are critiquing the actual fashion and are you know trying to make a good commentary so go watch those not this shit let me know what you think i am interested okay enough of the drama and that's all i have for today's video i have tried to summarize the event the theme the dress code uh give you some insight on that so you like can understand fully why the celebrities and the designers are doing those looks not just saying oh this is beautiful this i like it so i hope you liked it honestly i could show like 50 more looks and i could talk for hours because there's so many and i feel like there's so many good ones this year there's some others that are really really bad but yeah comment below who were for you the best and worst rest i am very interested in that that's it for today thank you so much for watching and for supporting my channel please subscribe uh press the little bell button there and give it a like bye guys <laughs>